ओके सो गुड मॉर्निंग गुड इवनिंग गुड आफ्टरनून एवरी वन आर डिपेंडिंग ऑन योर रीजन माई सोच सुबह मिर्जा एंड आई एम गोइंग टू इंटरव्यू एंड स्पीक विद माई मेंटी एंड डेलीगेट मारियस फॉल्डस अबाउट इज पी जी एम पी सक्सेस स्टोरी ही हैज अचीव इज पी जी एम पी कपल ऑफ वीक्स एगो विद मार्वलस अचीवमेंट ऑफ अब टारगेट एक्चुअली फाइव अब टारगेट इन द एग्जाम which is uh, fantastic uh, and rare uh, as well so we are going to speak to him but before that let me give you a brief introduction about myself and the company which i am representing and then we will start the conversation uh, so i am based in pakistan i am a professional with around 18 years of uh, career uh, in the technology sector as well as in the training and uh, consultancy sector for the past 3 years i am full time dedicated Uh, to my own venture uh, which is a management consultancy and a professional training startup with the name on time training and consultancy services i uh, i have uh, multiple credentials professional credentials uh, in my profile uh, including triple p certifications from pmr which is the pmp pgmp and psmp certification rmp certification i am psm certified as well and i am a certified trainer for pmp and the uh, Yes, he has some certifications. Uh, on top of that, I am a certified governance professional from P3GQA, and I am a certified trainer from P3GQA as well, which is a project program and portfolio governance. So this is a brief about myself and the company which I am representing on time training and consultancy services. It's a professional training and uh, consultancy setup. You can call it a management consultancy where we provide and uh, support and uh, consultancy. in the p3m and p3g domains uh, which means project program and portfolio management and project program and portfolio governance uh, we are the promoters and advocates of uh, pmi and p3g qa and we offer support and uh, mentoring and consulting for the credentials uh, offered by these organizations as well as we offer uh, support and consultancy uh to individuals and organizations uh, uh, in in the p3m and p3g capacity uh, which includes pmo consultancy uh interview preparation career counseling uh, advisory uh, services for the projects and programs uh, and uh, other related services so if you are interested in any such services you can always contact me and we can share the uh, communication channels in the chat box uh, in a little uh, while so we can now get started with the uh, agenda for today which is uh, how mario has achieved this tremendous success in his pgmp journey uh, and uh, we, we are going to ask him certain questions with which uh, you can get assistance in your own pgmp journey but before that mario good afternoon uh, good evening actually good evening and yeah, good evening. Uh, yes. thank you for joining us uh, taking out time i know you are very uh, busy in your professional life so will you uh, please uh, introduce yourself first to the audience yes first of all i would like thank you to thank you very much for hosting this online discussion today uh, my name is marius furlas i come from greece and for the last 4 years i'm working in the united arab emirates based in dubai My profession is construction manager, and uh, I'm working currently for the last four years for Fresnet Middle East, here in Dubai and all uh, other Emirates. Uh, so yes, like this. Right. Uh, okay. So Marius, what was your motivation uh, for going with PGMP specifically? Actually, generally, uh, in my career, I'm involved for many years, for almost we can say ten years in managing uh, many projects together, related projects, and I'm involved in many projects, which uh, it has given to me a very good background and a very good, let's say, skills in order to have a good, uh, let's say, a good perception of management. So the whole trip started seven years ago with attaining the PMP. So later, after PMP, I passed through some certifications that I obtained as well. So for the last two years, I was thinking very seriously in order to go for PCMB because I thought that is the next step. Because, uh, for example, when you are managing many projects together that they are similar to each other, then you are, let's say, a proven program manager. and it was a certification that i wanted very much to gain and i was thinking for this seriously for the last two years however let's say i didn't have the time uh, 
uh, to commit uh, in order to prepare myself properly to go for the certification. So uh, last year, while uh, uh, actually not last year, six months ago, while I was searching for the material and generally for the PGMP in the internet, I found your profile. So you remember that time I approached you in LinkedIn. We had initially some discussions. Then you, if you remember, I had some doubts to go or to not go because that time also I was very busy. And you know, to study and prepare yourself for this certification, you need to invest a lot of time for this. Uh, so after some time, I finally took the decision to go for this certification because it's a very prestigious certification. And also it was a high motivation for me to go to the next level as a professional. So it was the time that uh, I took the decision and uh, we started this journey in March 2024. Yes. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, uh, you did your PMP earlier uh, than PGMP, which is a usual pattern. People usually go for PMP or in case of... Uh, uh, Agile, uh, if they are following Agile, they, they go for ACP or PMP or both. And then usually in a couple of years, they go for PGMP and then for the, uh, you know, the higher certifications than that. So uh, at times people ask this question as well that, uh, uh, is it necessary to have PMP for PGMP? Is it like uh, as an eligibility requirement as well as from a preparatory perspective? Uh, they, they want to ask both because as an eligibility requirement from PMI, no, it is not necessary. Even if you are not PMP certified, you can still go for PGMP if you have a certain years of experience in project management plus a certain years of experience in program management. So as an eligibility requirement, it's not hard and fast. But like, you know, from a, from an understanding perspective, from an experience perspective, from an exposure perspective in the PMI world, they ask that uh, without going for PMP, can we able to do that uh, or easily, not easily. So what would you say, how PMP has been helpful in your PGM uh, journey? I will tell you, generally, when I started my journey with the PMI certifications, I first uh, started with CAPM in 2016. Although I thought that it was not required at that time, I took this decision to go with CAPM before going for PMP, just to understand the concept of the exam and very important to understand the philosophy and the concept and the full spirit of PMI. For example, when I took uh, the exam for CAPM in 2016, it helped me very much in order to understand uh, the full mentality. So later for me, it was easier in 2017 to obtain the PMP, the, the PMP certificate because it was easier for me to understand the full concept and the full spirit of the exam. Generally, to my opinion, it is good to start with PMP because, first of all, it will help you prove your project management skills. And secondly, it will help you very much in order to understand the concept the, and what PMI wants from you. Because in the end of the day, for PMI certification, it's not that I study the book, I go for the exams, I pass. PMI always examines if you are a project manager, or a program manager or a portfolio manager. They want to see through the exams, because majority of the questions are situational, they examine if you are a program manager, project manager, portfolio manager. So they want to see through these questions, situational questions, that you have this knowledge and experience, and then you can gain the certificate. Okay. So uh, you would say that going with PMP or certification for project management uh, is helpful. Of course, not necessary, yes. but it's helpful and very helpful because for the life or yes. uh, domain in program management, uh, it, it maps with uh, the idea of uh, the life cycle in uh, project management and, uh, you know, the certain artifacts and certain terminologies and multiple aspects, actually. A method exactly, with yes. uh, the project life cycle. So yes, in case you are not PMP or you don't want to go for PMP or maybe you have a limited investment and you uh, feel that PGMP is better for you or your career, still you can do that. However, uh, I personally feel being a mentor that probably you need to invest one to two months more uh, in that case uh, yes. to understand the project 
uh, management concepts first before going for the program management. Not for the certification point of view of project management, but to understand the program in a better way. So yes, uh, that's the case. Uh, yeah, of and course, that, def yes. definitely, for example, you need to have a very good knowledge of project management. Yes. And then you need to go yes. exactly. You need to go for program management, and then it's the time that you will go for portfolio management. Meaning to say that there are steps that you need to follow strictly in order to understand the full concepts and gain these prestigious certifications. Okay, so the uh, the most popular question that uh, that any PGMP aspirant or PGMP candidate would ask you is how much time you personally took for your preparation. How did you do the preparation? What was the study plan? What was the schedule? How many hours in a day, in a week? Um, and uh, what was the pattern? Of, I mean, what would you like to uh, share in that regard? Uh, look, first of all, this, uh, this is very subjective, meaning to say that each and every person has her or his own requirements in order to study or in order to understand things and being involved. From my point of view, uh, and for myself, actually, it took me approximately three months uh, by studying on a daily basis, even in the weekends as well. And I was studying approximately one to two hours maximum on a daily basis for three months. And during this period also, except of studying, it was uh, almost one month period that uh, the, the application was prepared and was submitted to PMI in order to be accepted and give the exams. Plus also the studying of the guide, uh, test exams, uh, and all these things that are very required in order to give the exam and pass it. Okay, and uh, uh, overall, uh, so we suggest a study plan, like being a mentor or being the organization, we suggest a plan of around 100 to 120 hours uh, on average to everyone. Uh, but uh, every every person, every, every mentee is different than the other. So... Uh, like if I ask you overall the number of hours uh, that you have spent, uh, would you say like it's almost the same or more or less? Uh, uh, I would say the same. Yes, I would agree with you. It's approximately the same. Yes. So 100 to 120 hours, maybe however the delegate uh, would like to divide maybe 15 hours per week, 10 hours per week, maybe uh, 20 hours per week if they are in our yeah. But then on let's every, say yes. Let's say 10 to 15 hours per week, we can say approximately. 10 to 15 hours per week is a very manageable and very, uh, you know, uh, very realistic time with which you can absorb the concepts, you can follow, and you can manage everything in parallel like work, family, and other uh, priorities in the life. Yes. yes, I agree. I, I suggest the same uh, to, uh, like, or, in journal, when somebody asks me that, uh, what's the, uh, advice that you would want to give uh, for the study, I, I would I would say the same. That minimum 10 hours or maximum 15 to 18 hours in case you are in a hurry for the exam yes. is an ideal time for the uh, for the exam unless and until you want to dedicate yourself for the exam preparation where like in the next two weeks or the next 10 days, 15 days, you are only doing a study and nothing else. That's a separate case, which is usually not the case with the senior professionals who usually opt for PGMP. Yeah. So if you dedicate 15 hours, that's straight away 2.5 to 3 months uh, uh, overall, which is a very, very realistic time for study and preparation and uh, sitting in the exam. We don't recommend yeah. more than uh, 2.5 to 3 months uh, on average for exam preparation and exam writing. Uh, like beyond that, probably you would get bored, you would get... Uh, uh, you know, unnecessary freaked out or stressed out, and uh, maybe uh, either you leave it all together, or maybe you uh, like the preparation would go in a negative direction rather in a positive direction. So uh, that's a recommendation. You have. know, from my experience, when you are ready, you will understand it. You will yes. feel it inside you that yes, I'm ready. You remember also uh, the last uh, weeks before I go to the exam that you were asking me, Marus, how do you feel? I was saying to you, I'm ready. I need maybe for, uh, let's say, one more week to finalize some things and I will go for the exam. Also, as per my experience with uh, the PMI exams and previous certifications, when you are ready, you will feel it inside you, so you will go and you will pass the exam, 100%. Yes, uh, and uh, when uh, a, a particular candidate or an uh, aspirant is ready for the exam, 
I myself uh, tell them that it's the right time to book the exam and there is no need to delay because I know that if you are going to delay, then this is not going to be good uh, or it's not in your favor because everybody has exam anxiety. Everybody is like afraid of the exam. Even I'm yeah. afraid of the exam as well. When when I have to sit in the exam, I think the same that, okay, let's uh, give another two days, another two weeks, uh, some more time. There, uh, No time is good enough for the best study. There is no best study. There, there, there is a good enough study uh, so that you... Uh, you uh, make it to a success as well as you are satisfied with your own success. So uh, that, that's the advice that we would like to give to every uh, aspirant who is actively uh, preparing for the PGMB because there are many actually in the participant list who are actively preparing for the exam. Anyways, uh, moving forward, uh, so uh, when you went to the exam room on your exam day, how was your overall experience? By experience, like uh, with respect to the interface, exam uh, simulator interface, uh, with respect to your time management, with respect to the pressure handling, with respect to uh, like, uh, you know, the exhaustion that you may face because it's a four hour consecutive exam and uh, that's like too much for uh, like in one go. And that stress in itself is huge. Even, no matter how well you are prepared uh, by the third hour or maximum by the fourth hour, you are just, you are just done. Yeah. You just want to get done with that. So what was your experience? What would you like to advise with respect to managing those four hours uh, while writing the exam? Look, actually, when I started the exam, for example, I started, first of all, what uh, before you go for the exam, it's very important to practice many questions. Generally, you need to practice and make sure that you will finish the exam within the required time frame. Because if you are not able to finish within the required time frame, then of course you will start uh, feeling stress. And this is going to affect, let's say, your productivity and your efficiency. This is for sure. Uh, when I started taking the exam, I was feeling very confident. Uh, psychologically, I was very ready and I deeply believed to myself and uh, I said to myself, okay, Marius, you are going, you will pass it 100%. So when I started taking the exam, I started taking the first questions. So I saw directly that I can manage these questions, for example. So I started feeling more and more and more motivated which, let's say, uh, helped me very much in order to deal with the next questions. And I finished uh, 170 questions uh, in two and a half hours. Once I finished, let's say, the first round, of the, the first round, I took one small break of 10 minutes, and later I entered again the room. I did one review of approximately uh, 40 minutes. Then I submitted the results, and I passed, I passed the exam. So you uh, you could manage to attempt or do the first iteration of all 170 questions in like in around three hours and you had like plenty of time available for the review. Like yes. 45 minutes is way too much yes. for the review itself. And you believe that a good practice and a lot of practice is uh, going to be very helpful in giving you that confidence and that speed as well in the exam. Of course. You need to be a very strong, uh, let's say, you need, for example, to be a very strong test taker, 100%, in my opinion. Also, you need to practice lots of questions before you sit for the exam. And also, it's very important because majority of questions are situational questions that examine if you understand and if you know the concept from the practical and experience point of view. It's very important to practice many questions because along with the study of the PG guide, program management guide, it will help you understand the concept very well. So you will be able during the time of the text to face the question and answer them correctly. Correct. And uh, also, uh, I, uh, I always uh, say it uh, like one day before uh, the exam uh, to every candidate that Ideally, uh, you should be in a position to attempt uh, 50 questions in every hour so that you are done with 150 questions in the first three hours or 
if you could do like a little more in the first two hours, maybe 55 to 60, and um, it may be like you can slow down in the third. You are eventually going to slow yes. down in the third or fourth hour, or it can yes. be very otherwise if you uh, if you were like very uh, careful and you know very uh, cautious in the beginning that you are taking five minutes per question or something because you you think that we have plenty of time available. Actually, no time is uh, enough in the exam. Uh, your initial few uh, minutes and hours are actually the, uh, the the most prestigious that you need to plan and you need to utilize very carefully and that only comes with the right guidance and with the right practice yeah. right so uh, also, i yes please yeah. and also to say for example in order to answer the question on time it's not something that you require specific skills or a charisma or talent it's purely uh, from my experience it's purely a matter of uh, continuous and constant practice Yes. You need, for example, when you are going to make your plan in order to give any PMI exam, you need to make a proper plan and stick to this plan. Because this it will give you the discipline and in the end of the day, the positive feeling that you are ready to go and deal with the exam. Uh, so, uh, if I ask you this question, because this is like a very important uh, uh, aspect uh, for the exam preparation, especially for the PMI exam, the continuation of your practice, the continuity with those uh, uh, concepts and, you know, certain uh, artifacts and cheat sheets and, you know, process flows and different uh, study plans that we provide to our mentees. Uh, how helpful was that? Of, of course, the mock exams matter. Uh, yes. That matters a lot, uh, that everybody understands. But I believe it's not only the mocks that matter. It's also the right guidance, the right yes. way to uh, to uh, like the right steps to know like at step number one, you need to do this and whatever is expected as for instance, step number four, if you want, if, if you try to do that as step number four, probably uh, it's going to be uh, in your, not in your favor, but it's going to be a negative impact in your preparation or probably you are, you just end up losing time only or effort only, or probably you would get demotivated because that was the not, not the right thing to do at that point in time, right? Um, and so I, I believe that a step-by-step -step guidance, because, you know, uh, at times people, they are just in a rush. They, they directly want to jump to the mock exams. They, they want to skip the uh, importance or they want, they don't understand the importance of the content itself, the, the right perspective of the life cycle, the artifacts and how uh, things are connected to each other, how th uh, the concept of benefits gets connected to the life cycle, how the concept of governance gets yeah. connected to the life cycle. Until and unless you don't understand what's the purpose of doing the mocks. You are not able to get the right, uh, you know, uh, the, the right gist of it from those situational questions. So uh, uh, what would you say? Uh, how helpful the study plan and the overall step-by-step -step guidance was that we have provided uh, in your successful journey. It helped me very much, I would say, and thank you very much for this one, because uh, the plan that you provided to me helped me very much in order, let's say, to prepare and make a proper sequence for my study, studying each chapter and step-by-step. -step. And when I had doubts, you remember that I would contact you and thank you very much for being always available in order to discuss theoretically and combine it with practice, with the professional practice, how these concepts, for example, can be analyzed in order, let's say, in the end to understand what the guy says, uh, what the guide says and what, uh, let's say, the exam asks from you. So it's very important to go step by step because how to say you cannot go directly from one to ten. You need to go one, two, three, four until you reach ten. And especially for such uh, complicated and difficult certifications. Uh, I really appreciate the fact that you gave me a very organized and a very meticulous study plan on which, let's say, I studied very carefully. I would contact you, we would discuss. And trust me, this helped me very much to, de to get the concept. And it's, let's say, the root cause of the success. I've been through previous certifications before that I didn't have mentor. I would study some material from the internet 
I would get the contact hours, then I would submit, I would prepare the application along, let's say, the theoretical, applica theoretical uh, knowledge along with the professional uh, experience, and then I would give the exam. But for some things, even in the exam, I wouldn't be so sure what to answer. Now, uh, I finished in two and a half hours, and also I achieved above target in all domains because the root cause of the success, it was that uh, there was a meticulous and organized studying plan. We will study this. We will see what we understand, what we don't understand. We will discuss it. We will understand, uh, later we will go to the mock exams. We will see where are the gaps and uh, what we understand and what we don't understand. And of course, everything, all the required knowledge, it will go, be combined in the end in order to go and deal with the exam. That's correct. And uh, so for uh, those who are interested uh, to know, um, Marius went for our uh, uh, complete self-paced PGMP exam prep package, which uh, includes uh, the complete application support. We are going to talk about the application. It's the next agenda point as well as the complete exam prep support without uh, going for the live uh, training and uh, any any kind of live training. It, it was all self-paced and at your own convenience. Uh, that package offers uh, certain hours of dedicated mentoring plus unlimited 24-7 uh, support, quick support over the WhatsApp or the quick calls or quick voice notes, yes. which, is, which is offered to everyone. Uh, like all the mentees uh, uh, who work with uh, uh, on time training and consultancy services. And um, Maria uh, uh, has been uh, one of those uh, delegates who effectively utilized that service of, uh, uh, you know, discussions and mentoring and support throughout his uh, three months journey of PGMP preparation. I have observed that uh, even uh, the support is there for the delegates and the candidates, they don't opt for it. Please go for the discussion-based uh, mode because until and unless you don't discuss, you will never get to know that if you are understanding it correctly or not, right? So, Marius, uh, would you uh, vouch for this uh, approach, the discussion-based approach for your understandings and concepts? Of course, you need to understand the concept. PMI, all, uh, majority of the questions in all PMI certifications are situational. For example, you are in this situation, you have this problem with the stakeholders or with the client or uh, with the community, what you are going to do, how you are going to address these things. Or for example, you have some issues with your team, what is the action that you are going to take? It's not, for example, a question that, okay, it's there in page 17 in the guide, you will, uh, for example, you will memorize it, you will go and answer, no. PMI, it's not such thing. PMI is situational questions uh, theoretical preparation along with professional experience. So, PMI will examine you are a program manager, you are a project manager, you are a portfolio manager, which is actually is very good for me. Yes, that's correct. Uh, so, uh, moving forward, uh, for those who are new to this certification and they are still exploring it, and the probably they are not aware of uh, the process or the eligibility criteria. Um, the PGMP application, and that applies with every, uh, it, it applies to every PMI certification, not to PGMP certification. Uh, every PMI certification has an eligibility criteria that uh, confirms that uh, the candidate has the right experience and knowledge and education and uh, different ba uh, uh, backgrounds uh, based on which PMI evaluates you. Uh, you qualify for that and via an application process, you need to prove that as well to PMI and uh, after getting the approval from PMI on your application, only then you can go for your exam. So uh, in case of PGMP and that applies to PFMP as well, which is a portfolio management uh, certification, the application process at the PMI end is pretty tedious and pretty complicated, <coughs> pretty subjective as well. The application itself is pretty subjective. It's not objective-based uh, application. Uh, so uh, most of the delegates uh, are scared of the application process. So they are not scared of this exam, but they are scared of the application. And they are rightly scared because the process is very uh, stringent at the PMI end and the uh, rejections are very, uh, very usual if it is not rightly written. So uh, uh, 
of course those who opt for the complete uh, uh, program or the complete uh, end to end uh, uh, exam preparation they they uh, get the uh, services for the application as well and at times you will only go for the application services from us and they don't opt for the exam uh, prep services so marius in your case how has been your application development as well as approval process for you Look, uh, generally, I would say that the successful application is the 50% of passing the exam. It's very important because also, as far as I know, and from my personal search in the internet, the, reject, the rate of the rejection in the application is very high, as far as I know. And you need to prepare one very detailed and meticulous application that is going to be, ex be examined in detail and from the PMI and from the panel in order, let's say, to get the approval and uh, proceed with the exam. And also, uh, I'm very grateful that we work together in order to, be, uh, in order to prepare this application uh, because uh, the application for the BGMP, it's not, a, it's not something easy to be done. Uh, for previous certificates, like PMP, for example, I prepared the application by myself, I submitted, I passed, and then I took the exam. But now it's not that simple. You need definitely, in my opinion, the guidance of a mentor that knows uh, the subject very well and has very strong knowledge, like you, for example, and thank you very much for it. You help me and you guide it in order to prepare properly the application, submit it, and uh, eventually what happened in my case, uh, it was approved uh, short term. Meaning to say, it's the first time that I'm getting such approval uh, in uh, such a short term. So sir, do you remember uh, uh, what, uh, so uh, uh, there are two approvals uh, in case of BGMP on the same application. So do you remember overall time for the approval? I, I can recall it was uh, early, but how early yes. was that? Uh, actually, the approval from PMI came after uh, approximately six working days. The approval by PMI from PMI upon all oh, six or seven working days once it was submitted. Then directly I was audited. You remember the case, I was audited. So I submitted the required uh, documents. The first one, it was a reference uh, from one of my colleagues that he justified all this experience that I have. And the second one, it was the degree diploma from the university. So after I submitted this document directly, I got approval after 24 hours. So totally, we are talking for approximately eight to nine working days, which exactly. actually is the yes, yeah. which actually is the first time that I have such short-term approval from PMI to go for an exam. This includes the panel review as well. Yes, yes, yes. Panel review before you remember, before when I was when I was approved by PMI. To go then directly when I made the application for the panel review, I was audited directly. Then I submitted the documents within 24 hours. And then after 24 hours, I got the approval from the panel to go for the exam. Right. So your panel was done way earlier. And actually, the yes, yes. Step. So for those who are not aware, the application, so I can briefly talk about the application process. And in case you are interested, you can talk about it offline. Um, uh, the application process for PGMP is. Uh, based on two steps. So first we need to create the application and the application itself is, uh, like I said earlier, subjective. So it checks your uh, uh, eligibility actually. It checks your education, uh, uh, fulfill, uh, educational requirement fulfillment. It checks your project management requirement fulfillment. It checks your program management requirement fulfillment, which is uh, four years of project management or PMP, an active PMP. Yes. And four years of program management. Uh, in detail, along with uh, four years of professional degree with your bachelor's, master's, or any higher degree than that. There is other set of criteria as well, in case you are not bachelor's or uh, you don't have a proper uh, you know, university degree. In that case, you need to have seven years of program management experience along with the four years of project management experience as well. Uh, so you need to uh, write your experience uh, demonstrating your program management and project management experiences via your real life projects and programs written in the uh, capacity of those domains in which program management is uh, uh, formulated by PMI, the strategic management, the governance, the uh, communication, uh, sorry, stakeholders and uh, life cycle and uh, the benefits. So PMI has uh, that, uh, uh, is, uh, you know, that uh, 
uh, structure for the application which they have revised actually post uh, march uh, after the march uh, update uh, in the exam uh, the application has actually been further concise so now there are only three sections uh, on top of the summary section which is leadership governance and strategy mm -hmm. only so there are certain questions that you need to subjectively answer based on your personal uh, sorry professional experience in the program management and there is a way to write it you need to write it in a uh, in a pmi mindset uh, with the program management uh, way of uh, Termi understanding terminology that. yes terminology. the terminologies matter a lot along with your mindset matters a lot because uh, the common mistake that people make uh, with based on which the rejection is uh, you know, provided by PMI is to write the PGMP application in the project management mindset or writing the program experiences in the application with the project management mindset, which is wrong. A PMI wants uh, the mention of interdependencies, for instance, because program is all about interdependencies and interconnectivity of multiple moving pieces. A PMI wants the mention of benefits, for instance, a lot of uh, uh, mention about the benefits because program is all about benefits, right? Uh, they want uh, a mention of uh, what you as a program manager has achieved in the program. Rather, you talk uh, about it in the second person or we have done it, they have done it. No, they want what you have done. It. So you need to write it in yes. the first person. So there is a lot of tactics that one needs to know uh, uh, before writing the application. Otherwise, uh, it's not going to get uh, approved by PMI. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, so moving forward, uh, 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 most likely people must, uh, already have asked you this question separately and uh, most likely in the comment uh, uh, box as well or maybe in the question answer session as well in the session they are going to ask you that um, how many mocks you have done which mocks was more uh, relevant uh, to the exam uh, did on-time training provide you the uh, real exam questions or uh, were there any a set of questions from the practice which as it is appeared in the exam um, i mean what what would you say uh, in that regard how relevant yeah. was uh, our mocks for the real exam very relevant very very relevant and very close to the actual exam but you would say it's close to the exam it's not as it is uh, going to appear in the exam because that's unethical that's that's exactly that's yes. not the right thing it's... to uh, go for it's close to the exam, yes. They help you, I would say, that these exams, they help you very much in order to understand the concept and go deal with the exam. Yes, and one, one thing that I would also want to say over here uh, for those who are preparing or those who are uh, they are aspiring to go for PGMP, that... Uh, Maybe some of the mocks provided by us, or maybe some other providers uh, you want to go for, they, they are, uh, you are going to get some direct questions in there. You Maybe you are going to get some very straightforward coming directly from the standard questions over there. Uh, and uh, you would say that uh, this kind of, this type of question is not going to appear in the exam. That's correct. All the 170 questions in the exam are going to be highly situational highly scenario based very uh, very tricky very very tricky not only tricky but very tricky and most likely in one situation or a question in the exam multiple topics are going to be touch based for instance you may get a strategy management along with the mention of governance along with the achievement of benefits in a scenario together based on yes. which something is asked and you need to first understand that how these topics are connected to each other yes point b to get to that point of understanding and grasping the scenario to get to the right option in the exam at least in your early phases of the preparation it's necessary to go for that direct and straightforward questions because until and unless you don't get the concepts straight via those direct or straightforward questions you can't directly lend to uh, the uh, you know the, the step of attempting the situational or highly situational question which again uh, takes us back to the concept of step by step uh, preparation so yes. uh, pe people like challenge us at times that this kind of questions are not going to appear in the exam. We, we are saying it right away. It's not going to appear in the exam. But 
from the step one or from the very early phases of the preparation, you can't directly land to those advanced level, highly situational questions. You are not going to get that. To get to that point, and yes, I'm going to say right away that no memorization at all is needed for the real exam. But yes, uh, some level of not really memorization, we call, don't call it memorization, we call it understanding, like uh, integration of the concept. To get to that level of point, it's necessary to go take baby steps to do like very basic level, foundational level, understanding, uh, test, uh, direct questions, uh, maybe very straightforward. What's the input of this? What's the output of this? What's the technique of this? But exam is not going to ask you these kinds of questions. No, never, never, ever. Don't expect this. Exam is going to be super, super situational and super, super tricky. Right? But nobody can directly start attempting the advanced level situational questions. There is a step-by-step -step way of getting there. So please keep that in mind. Uh, that exam is not, uh, maybe someone would say that what's the big deal, 170 questions, four options, one question. It's going to be very easy. No, it's very difficult actually. Because out of four options, maybe you are in a position to eliminate two easily. But the remaining two options is going to give you a very hard time in getting to the right one. Because PMI has crafted the question in a way that they would definitely confuse you in the remaining two options. Definitely. They, they are going to like look very alike until and unless you are not well prepared for the exam. Uh, just what in what you said, uh, PGMP is a difficult certificate to obtain. You need to state, uh, you need to study very hard, you need to study very much, invest time from yourself, and also you need to be very disciplined and dedicated. What I want to add uh, from my experience since we work together in order to pass this certificate, you have your material, you study the chapter. When you finish the chapter, there are the questions so that they summarize the chapter. So you are going to understand the concept. These are the initial steps that they will help you understand the, the, the very first things. Later, you will go, for example, to the somehow easy tests in order to see where you are and where you stand and what you understand and what you don't understand. And later, you will go to the more complicated. And why I'm saying this thing? Because if you go directly to the more complicated, you will be confused more and more because it's not an easy certification. You need to put all this knowledge in order and to understand what is going on and what is the full concept before you go for the exam. And you need to put the things in order because PMI examines if you are, for example, for our case, you are a project, you are a program manager, what you are going to do. So you, the things should be in, my, in order in your mind in order to say, for example, because you have all the questions, so you will say what I should do now, what it's, let's say, the most correct. Because we know from our experience that many times there are, for example, the four answers, but maybe two answers that are very close to each other. So you say, now what I'm doing? So you need to have very deep understanding of the concept and the thing should be in your mind in a very good order and specific order in order to go and crack the exam. So you need to start with the first steps. Later, you will go with the more complicated and later with the most complicated and later you will go and pass the exam. Which is the concept of step-by-step -step study plan. Not course, studying yes. everything together is going to be a mess and it's going to actually uh, demotivate exactly. you, rather motivate you or uh, put you in the right direction. So, so that's our suggestion to all those who are preparing for the exam that uh, uh, we know you are overwhelmed. We know you are uh, probably too much excited or you want to get done with that. And uh, like that's very, uh, like that's very normal. That's being human. But there is a process of uh, going for everything. And that process is very important, right? And this is exactly what PMI teaches us, process basically. And, and, uh, and nothing happens overnight, right? If it was like this, then we would study for two, three days for all the certifications and we would go past the exam, but it's not working like this. Yes, that's, that's correct. So uh, moving forward, um, 
Marius, uh, how would you define the uh, payback or the return on the investment that uh, uh, you have done or pe people uh, do in the certification uh, process? Because it's, uh, it's, of course, not an easy certification, but it's not financially, uh, you know, feasible as well because there is a yes, cost definitely, definitely. With this. Minimum cost is uh, uh, 1500 to 1600 USD and it can ra uh, be uh, raised to 2000 to 2500 uh, USD mm -hmm. as well, depending on uh, the mentor that uh, you are going with and uh, multiple other tools and uh, courses as well. So 1500 to 2000 US dollar investment, including the exam, of course, uh, in a certification, uh, definitely you should have a, a you know, proper vision and direction uh, with that investment. So uh, people, are, are, you know, at, uh, right away they ask that, uh, how I'm going to get the return on it? How, how it's going to get pay, paid back to me? Why, why would I invest this much uh, in this investment? Uh, how would you define or justify that? Or how the payback uh, means, like what is the definition of payback? Uh, generally everything, it's a combination of things. And what I'm saying is that, for example, of course, uh, it's practice, but also it's studying as well. You need to practice, but at the same time, you need to study. Uh, this the studying for this specific certification helped me to understand many things in my professional career and my professional environment. And definitely after studying the FINI, after studying uh, for BGMP and passing this certification, definitely I can see for myself that some concepts, I can understand them better for before, from before. Uh, so definitely I feel that uh, I have helped myself in order to progress professionally. On the other hand, uh, many people will ask you why you keep on investing on certification, uh, how you are going to take this money back. Definitely nobody will come and say to you, bravo, you did well, take this money. It's some knowledge that you will take, you will work on it, you will match with your own skills and with your own assets and techniques in order to apply it in your professional world. And for sure, when all these things applied by you uh, bring benefits, since we're discussing for program management, bring benefits and for your organization and for your environment. And since all these, let's say, factors are getting better because of you, definitely it's the time that this payback will come back to you. Yes. And uh, you exactly. know, uh, the, the payback or the return uh, doesn't come overnight it's it, it, like it's not always the case that you are done with the certification today and tomorrow you are going to get promoted or you are going to get a 50 percent raise in your salary and uh, probably uh, you are going to get a new job or something everything has it's uh, everything has a you know uh, it, 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 it takes its skewed time and it happens at the right time however uh, you need to be prepared for it Right. For instance, uh, many people uh, like uh, come to us and they, they are in a hurry for the certification. Why? Because they are getting a job and the only requirement that they are not fulfilling is the credential which companies are demanding and they are, don't have it. And credentials like these, PGMP or PMP, they, they can't be taken overnight if you, are do, if you want to do it the right way. And if you want to go the wrong way, then probably uh, th th that's a separate conversation. And we, we don't want to do that conversation at all, at least in our organization, because we, we only promote the idea of quality-based delivery, which demands the right investment, the right investment of not only the money, but the investment of your time and efforts as well. Right. So if you want to improve yourself as a person, as a professional, as an individual, or as a uh, as a like as a as part of the community, then you need to go the right way, and you need to invest in the right initiatives and the right uh, uh, purposes as well. And sooner or later, you are going to see the benefits coming coming your way, or the returns coming back to you. Uh, right. So uh, th that that's our two cents on uh, this uh, question. Uh, but this is a 
like it's a long conversation it can't be done in five yes, minutes definitely. or so but uh you know everybody may have their own perspective but our perspective is to go with everything with quality or I probably don't go for it at all right? it's what we say continuous development which is very important in order let's say to help things develop you need first to develop yourself you need to start from yourself when you start developing yourself and through this development you can and affect your environment because of course in order to affect aspects and factors of environment you need to have some specific skills knowledge and experience to do this thing when this environment starts become uh, starts becoming better because of you then this is the time that this return on investment will come back to you and also with a, the, a very high ratio i would say yeah correct uh also thank you very much uh, marius for your time and for the insights and thank you, thank uh, you in too. the end uh, would you would like to give any advice uh, to the uh, pgmp or pmi uh, aspirants and candidates yes actually the, actually thank you very much for this discussion today thank you for hosting this discussion and thanks each and everyone being here together with us today Generally, the advice I would like to say that uh, someone if needs to go for a PMI certificate needs to spend a lot of time in order to prepare properly. But through this journey, someone is going to gain a lot of knowledge. And after obtaining the certificate in combination with this knowledge gained, it's going to feel better and uh, someone is going to see the difference later. So, of course, during this preparation, there would be some times that you would feel very stressed or you maybe you will feel uh, demotivated. But as I said, when you have the discipline and let's say the excitement and motivation to proceed, then, of course, you can do it and you can crack the exam. And, of course, uh, gain a lot of very important knowledge that definitely is going to help you and improve you both professionally and personally. Thank you so much, Marius. Welcome, uh, welcome. Yeah, so I think we have uh, uh, some questions in the chat box for you. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, if anybody wants to ask any question, they can just uh, raise hand or unmute and ask it directly from Marius. So uh, Banaga is asking that experience of a program management requirement, it must only be in the program manager role or managing role in one of the aspects. Actually, this is a very uh, good and, uh, uh, you know, critical question while we write the application. This uh, happens a lot that not everybody has a very, you know, specific program manager or program management role in their portfolios. Uh, by role, I mean the designation of the program manager itself. Uh, it's not necessary that everybody has got that title in the organization for a variety of reasons. So it can be because of uh, the bureaucracy reason in the organization. It can yes, be reason that uh, organization doesn't offer this role. It can be for the reason that uh, they don't want to pay you uh, at a program manager role. And if they are going to give you that role, they definitely have to pay you at that scale. And they just want to take the work from you um, while uh, keeping you at an uh, engineering role or at a project management role mm -hmm. or if you are lower role than that. But if you have the right experience that demonstrates or that aligns with what PMI suggests uh, a program manager does, then you can opt for the PGMP. And multiple yeah. applications, I would say more than 50% of the applications that I have written so far uh, like that, that aligns with this concept. They were not uh, the program manager in the resumes, but they were the program managers actually with respect to the work that they have done or they uh, they had been doing in the organization. So the answer to your question, Banaga, is yes, if you have four years experience uh, with the four years uh, bachelor's or master's degree, or uh, if you have uh, the, uh, the uh, ideally the program manager role, yes, that that, that applies. But if not, then PMI accepts it if you can prove that whatever you have done, for instance, in your project manager role, for instance, in your operations manager, uh, that you have been doing the program management. Multiple, time, uh, multiple times, this is the case that people are doing multiple roles in their specific designation. They are being... Just, yes, yes. Just to add in what you are saying, uh, it's not mandatory or necessary to have the title. 
in the end of the day is what you are doing and what you are applying. Maybe, for example, you are not, uh, you don't have the official title of the project manager, but you are doing project management in order to do your job properly. Or maybe, for example, yes, you are managing many projects that they are similar to each other and they are bringing benefits to the organizations. What you are doing? Program management. You don't have the official title, but this is what you are doing. So somehow it's conflicting, but BMI does not examine the official title examines your professional experience and what you are doing in order to run these things. PMI understands it because they know exactly. uh, and you know the people from uh, like around the globe uh, come to them for these certifications and different organizations and different regions and different sectors like they operate differently. So uh, uh, they, they have to accommodate everyone. And the, the, the way of accommodation is writing it in a manner that you can justify that even you when you were not in the, that role, you were actually doing what uh, PMI calls as program management. And that was the case with Marius as well. He was more in a technical role as per the designation. But uh, in his uh, actual uh, uh, like uh, work role, he has been doing project management or program management for a very long period of time and we, we could have uh, justified that in the application very easily. Especially, you know, I'm here in the Gulf for more than 10 years before I was in Qatar and now in Dubai. So especially for the in the construction sector, these uh, markets are very demanding. So in order to do a very good and successful job, you need to combine in the technical aspect, but also in the managerial aspect. So you need to run all these factors in parallel successfully. You understand what I mean? Yes, I hope, Banaka, we, we were able to answer your question. And if you want a detailed discussion, you can always reach out to us. I have already shared uh, my communication channels in the chat box. Uh, so Hasan is asking that did the practice of W questions, I, I, uh, me, uh, I think he means uh, the mock questions, help yes. you in the exam and how the exam questions were different than that of the practice questions that you have there. Look, as I, say, as I said, of course, you need to practice lots of questions in order to go for the exam. And of course, you will start from the simpler questions and later you will go to the more difficult and more complicated questions. And you need to practice definitely lots of questions. Uh, from my side, I practice the, my, the questions provided from the past material, which were more than enough in order to uh, help me prepare properly and make me feel confident in order to go and deal with the exam. Uh, like uh, overall, we have provided, uh, we like we provided to everyone, not only to Mario. So 1400, 1500 question overall we provide uh, like with the uh, uh, different difficulty level and uh, with uh, a variety of, you know, flavor at uh, different levels uh, during the preparation journey. But out of those, uh, I would say the mock test itself, which were uh, around, uh, I think, uh, 1,200 questions, they were situational. Most of them were highly situational. And uh, uh, we, we claim that if you do our practice material uh, holistically and with the right context and with the right, with the right guidance provided to you, you don't need to go for any other material. In, in exactly. fact, I, uh, we also claim that you do not need to even study the standard, which is not recommended. But in case you are rushing or you are you don't have that much time and you, uh, you you can't really go for the book, so in that case, uh, covering our material and tour is more than enough to uh, at least pass the exam, right? But of course, there is no substitute or alternate to standard or PMI books that that's like uh, that, that that's given. We we are not saying that PMI books are not helpful; they are helpful, but it's. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's a usual case that we, uh, people find it uh, boring, dry, and uh, too much verbose. And uh, of course, the interface of the book is also not that good. And the use cases and scenarios and examples are not discussed with respect to the topic. So people like uh, eventually they end up uh, you know just getting lost in everything, and they are not really going in the right direction. So. Uh, in, if you follow our material, maybe you don't even uh, need to read the book as well. And uh, 
that's the case. So uh, I, I my advice is at least if someone wants to work together with you and be your mentee, the guide and your material are more than enough in order to pass and crack the exam successfully. More than enough. Because uh, sometimes there are many, for example, when you are preparing, maybe uh, someone wants to go and search for more questions, for more questions, for more questions. But maybe this is a trap because you are going, for example, maybe you are going to confuse yourself more and more and more. Which yeah. maybe it will uh, make you feel doubt if you know the material, if you know the concept or not. Especially for my case, the study of the guide and your material were more than enough in order to understand the concept and pass uh, the exam. And this is also what I would advise someone. Uh, for example, if someone wants to go with Tuba, the work together with Tuba, the discussion, the guidance and uh, the study of the guide are more than enough in order to guarantee the passing of the exam. And one other thing that I would like to tell uh, you guys, uh, especially to those who are uh, actively preparing and they have booked their exam and they are just uh, very much into it, uh, don't go for fifth edition of the standard for the exam. I know this may sound a little weird because that's the latest standard edition and uh, one would uh, ask or may challenge as well that uh, how come this is possible, but this is the case. At, at least for the current exam, the exam uh, is based on ECO. In case of PMI, the exams are based on ECO, and ECO is nothing but a curriculum for that exam, the uh, outline of the curriculum for that exam. Uh, so ECO or exam content outline is still is more uh, in alignment with the fourth edition. By still, I mean there is uh, like this, an exam can change any time. Uh, of course, with uh, some announcement and with some, uh, uh, you know, e uh, lead time, but uh, it can change any time. But so far, exam has not been updated based on, or the ECO has not been updated based on the fifth edition. So till that time, uh, you don't hear from PMI or from uh, the uh, trainers or mentors in that capacity. Please don't uh, put your exam at a stake because we know many reasons from our professional uh, links, uh, not our students, because our students, of course, follow our advice, but uh, some other people who went for the fifth edition for the exam prep, they failed the exam, actually, because fifth edition, uh, in fifth edition, the uh, PMI has um, made the program management principle based. They have introduced one more domain. And of course, the idea is a little different or the idea of perceiving program management is a little different over there. Exam still is not updated based on that. So, of course, you are not going to get the exam correct if you are going to follow the fifth edition. Please keep that in mind. Of course, this can change anytime, but that's going to be with an announcement uh, by PMA, with a formal announcement by PMA. The usual observation is that PMI takes uh, a couple of months, at times a couple of years as well, to revise or update the exam drastically. Minor changes can be there, but drastic changes usually happen in four to five years of time, not before that. So uh, again, there's no hard and fast rule, but that's a usual observation in the past 10 to 15 years uh, with other PMI exams. So uh, uh, based on that, we are not expecting a major change in the exam sooner, but anything is possible in the PMI as well. At least for the next two to three months, we are not expecting any changes. So please keep in consideration that you are preparing based on the current ECO and you are referring fourth edition or the material based on the fourth edition. Thank you very much, uh, Marius, for your time. I know we Thank are uh, overrunning the session by five minutes. Thank you, everyone, uh, for your time. You. If there are no more Thank questions, you. we can wrap, uh, wrap up the session. Thank you. Uh, take care, everyone. I will be back Thank very you. soon with a new success story. Till then, uh, goodbye.